Let's talk about the ultimate Instax mini guide to unique cameras specifically. Uh, let's get into it. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. There are a wide variety of Instax mini cameras, like this one being one of the most common ones, and I wanted to talk about some of the more unique ones, ones that you may not have actually heard of or come across, or maybe heard about in passing. So I'm gonna show off a few that I own that I think are pretty unique. And the cameras that you're gonna see, I've done videos on most of them, not all. I still got some to shoot that will be coming soon so be sure to check the links in the description for further detailed information on the cameras and links to purchase if i could find them some of these are pretty old which brings us to the first camera which is the instax mini 10. pretty sure this is the very first instax mini camera that was made <laughs> i could be wrong Leave some comments down below if I am. Yell at me, please. I haven't actually shot with this. I got this recently uh, from Dave Knopp, uh, from the Knopp Top YouTube channel. He sent this over so I can check it out, but I haven't been able to shoot with it yet. And uh, mostly because I keep forgetting to go get batteries. It uses CR123A batteries. And uh, I keep forgetting. But it's a really cool, unique camera. I'm really excited to try it because not only can you uh, shoot it in the regular mode like this, it also has the ability to turn it sideways with a dedicated button to shoot in like horizontal mode. That's pretty unique. There's only like one or two other cameras I can think of that even offers that feature. And this is really handy. I'm surprised they got away from this, but it has a film slot cover for the ejection of the photo. It keeps dirt and grime from getting inside of it. It's a great little camera. And I'm pretty sure you can pick this up for like 40, 50 bucks. I'm also pretty sure this was only released in Japan because everything on this is in Japanese. Which brings us to this unique guy. This is the Pick Toss from Tomi Takara, a toy manufacturer that made a camera. Really, really fun. And I recently did a video on this as part of one of my episodes for the Halloween special this past year. No batteries are required to use this, <laughs> meaning if you wanna use its flash, then you have to put batteries in it, but you don't need the batteries to have the camera function outside of that. Uh, it has a hand crank for the ejection, it has a lens cap that doubles as a ND filter, which is necessarily dark enough for some really, really bright scenes, like in the summer, direct sunlight, you would need to go a little bit darker. But this camera is pretty fun. Uh, and one of the most unique cameras uh, for Insax Mini that I think I even own, and you'll see in this video today. Next up is the Jolly Look Pinhole Camera. This is sold as a DIY kit. I don't know if you can get them pre-built. This was sent to me to check out from them a couple of years ago. I did kind of a first thoughts video on this, but I haven't really returned to it. And mostly because I'm not really a great pinhole photographer. Uh, I need to practice with it. I haven't really got the best results out of it, but that's more of a me thing than a camera thing. But I want to talk about it today because it is very unique. You adjust the focus by physically moving the lens back and forth. And it has a hand crank to eject the photo. It has kind of a uh, exposure guide wheel on the back to help you kind of gauge it. It does take some practice, but if you're into pinhole photography and instant photography, this is going to be your best bet. It's made out of wood, so durability is also something you have to kind of worry about uh don't be dropping it because it'll, it'll fall apart but you can just glue it back together uh that's always a option it is wood and before we move on to the next camera i want to uh pause for a second and talk about today's video sponsor that is a lee home instant photo frames yeah really cool ones and they got some killer acrylic photo frames. I've done videos on these in the past. And it was awesome to hear that they want to sponsor today's video because I genuinely love their products. They have quite the variety, like this floating frame where the photos are held in by magnets or that. They even have a flat like slide in type. And this one has a marquee at the bottom and you can put whatever phrase that you want. And they do come included with letters to put whatever you want. This will fit all formats of Instax photos, but they do have you covered with Polaroid as well. With their brand new floating frames, you can have Instax, Polaroid, whatever you want. And it comes packaged with a template so you can line up your photos so they're perfectly square. They even have something where you can turn your photos into a calendar. And they've got a lot more products, high-end quality. Best part is it won't break the bank. So if you wanna learn more about them, review videos, or pick them up for yourself, there'll be some links in the description below. Now, back to your regular scheduled programming. 
Ah yes, the sharper image. This one's actually really cool. The photo quality is excellent. And the best part is the viewfinder is parallel with the lens. So when you're framing something up, you don't really have to compensate all that much. Now, when you're shooting like this, it will come out horizontal. You'll have to turn it however you want uh, to get it to come out in the normal orientation or what the orientation for Insax Mini is known for, which is a vertical version, but it's a great little camera. It operates just like an Instax Mini, like eight or nine. It has the dial on the front to choose your aperture, not the shutter, just the aperture control. This was not expensive when it came out. I think I got it on sale for like five bucks, to be honest, from like Walmart. I think these were only like $20, $30 to begin with. Uh, if you can find one, I know they're kind of rareish, definitely get one. And I did a video on this one as well, so there'll be a link in the description for that too. Ooh, move right along to the Instax Mini 70. Another one I haven't shot with because Dave actually sent me two cameras. This one and then the uh, Mini 10. This one I really can't wait to shoot with. Look at the form factor. Look how small it is. It's, just, it's probably the most pocketable Instax Mini camera that I own. Pretty compact, however it does use those crazy batteries the cr2 batteries video will be done on this very soon you have a few options with it you can change the modes for different focus distances which is really nice and a self timer and a tripod mount that's cool very few insects mini cameras have tripod mounts and it also has this ability for your flash you can change the flash intensity yeah, so if you're in a really, really dark room and you don't wanna have your subject to be blown out, you can turn it on, I think they call it soft light, soft light mode, I think is what it is. Just turn down the brightness of the flash, which is really cool. And I can't wait to test that out officially. Again, video on this will be coming soon, so stay tuned. Oh yes, this interesting abomination. Not really, it's a joke. This is an Instax mini camera made by Polaroid. Yeah, video had been done on this a couple of years ago. It also uses the crazy batteries, CR2, but it's flat, it can fit in a camera bag really nice. And it has options for controlling the flash, meaning turning it off. But back in the day, Polaroid actually made their own branded Instax film. Called, it was like Polaroid 300, 500, 300. I can't remember now. I think it's 300. And also Mio film. Mio? Mio? I'm, I'm still not 100% sure how to pronounce it. It, it. You can still use it today with regular old Instax mini film. No tripod mount, no self timer. You do have uh, focus distance, like I said, light and dark and exposure compensation. All around though, a pretty decent camera. I'm gonna throw in the Instax mini 90. You probably know about this one, the Neo Classic. I did just do a video on this and it's been around for about five, six years. It's pretty popular but it's starting to get phased out so if you're just getting into the hobby i definitely want to at least mention this camera it's awesome <laughs> this is my favorite insax mini camera uh to shoot with this thing has every feature you could want so cool i'm not gonna go through all of them because i just did a video check the link in the description but you have a lot of crazy features with this there's a party mode there's different focus distances there's flash controls it has bulb mode tripod mount best of all the battery is rechargeable and removable yeah has a button on the side so you can take it in any orientation you want there's really just so much that this camera's great it's fantastic and last but not least mostly just an honorable mention the key picks <laughs> yeah this is technically not a camera per se it is a phone printer and then you put your phone on there and you can take a picture of your screen however you can actually use this for macro photography i have this piece of tape here which is actually how i measure the focus distance because it's the same height as the plane for your phone and you can actually use it and take some epic close-up pictures it is awesome no battery is needed at all period i love that ability don't see that often on products i'll leave a link to a video that noptop did was where i got this idea and we did an interview with him about this a couple of years back but this thing's really awesome definitely recommend it they were on amazon if they still are i'll leave a link for them too i can't can't remember if they're still available or not but they weren't expensive i think i paid like 25 or 30 bucks for it and now let's read comments from the previous video Ooh, hey. Welcome to the section where I read your comments from the previous video. And then that video just so happens to be today's video sponsor. A little home photo frames. Got some comments, let's read them. If you want a chance for your comments to be read here on the channel at the end of my videos, be sure to leave a comment on this one. You never know, could be in the next video. Comments, questions, or concerns are welcome. First comment up is a 7AOD. I wanna buy an instant K 
camera or an instant photo printer to use for photographs tourists in my tourist area and earn money and don't know what the ideal option is. Kodak camera or Zinc photos? Interesting, kind of a loaded one there. But uh, if you wanna go for cost per print, you might wanna look more into a dye sublimation printer. I've done some videos and recommendations. The ones I recommend is the Canon Selfie and as well as the Laney printer. Four by six photo prints, they're about, I think 20 to 50 cents per print. Actually, so it's somewhere in there, I'm not 100% sure. But those might be the best. Just use your phone, be able to print them out. Sam Weinberg, 4251 says, crazy, I took a nearly identical photo of Pike's Place four months ago. Great product, by the way. Yeah, that's crazy. Maybe I was there. Well, no, I wasn't there. <laughs> that was taken in March, I think. But yes, the frames are a great product. Vegeta1496 says, you're the reason why I fell in love with Polaroid. Well, you're welcome, but also I'd like to apologize to your wallet. Mossy de Chanel says, I go to Ikea and buy their frames, go to a frame shop and have them cut custom mats for all the instant formats. Wide square Polaroid looks so good. That is a cool idea. A lot of legwork, probably a lot more costly, I would imagine, but that's a pretty cool idea. The Steph Gorg. Uh, Def have to check out these clear frames for instant wide photos. Thanks for the rec. Any recommendations on instant film holders for scanners? Ooh, good question. Um, there's not a lot of options. Um, I do use, uh, it's not perfect, but I do have the uh, Epson ES60W, not a sponsor. Uh, it's mostly for document scanning, but it does a great job. And that's what I use to scan my photos. So it's not a holder. You just put it in and it auto feeds through. It has its quirks, but for the price and the quality that you get, it's pretty good. And I, I recommend looking into that. As far as holders go, I uh, kind of just have to get creative and make your own. Uh, there's not a lot of people out there that currently are making them. I think Brooklyn Film Camera made some briefly, but I don't know if they make those anymore. C2YO3WR says, Hey Chris, got a random question. Bought an SLR 680 camera. Can't wait to use it. Now I discovered that there are Polaroid original 600 film or just 600 films. Which do I get? Is there a difference? Well, welcome to the hobby. Uh, but no, you don't have to worry about it. And the short version is uh, Polaroid went out of business in 2008. Then some people saved the factory, turned it into the Impossible Project, and then in like 2016-ish, somewhere on that around there. Then they changed the name to Polaroid Originals, and then in like March 2020, I think it is, they just bought this name straight up Polaroid. Technically, Polaroid Company now isn't the Polaroid Company from back in the day. Hopefully that clears it up. It's the same film. But I wouldn't recommend getting it just because Polaroid Originals film now is a little older so the results of the photos might not be the best so just get the regular polaroid branded ones so that's all i got for you for this section on reading your comments again leave some comments down below and for the chance for me to read them in the next video so there you have it the ultimate guide to unique cameras that you may not have known about do you have some of these do you have some that i haven't talked about leave some comments down below because i would love to find new cameras. I love finding new cameras. And you never know, your comment may be featured in the next video. Thank you again to Elite Home for sponsoring today's video. And that's all I got for you. I'll see you in the next video. Now, get out there, make some art.